Hello and welcome to this week's RuneScape news, including a major nerf to the Garden of Career thieving method and more, so whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. For RuneScape guides, content, and news, be sure to subscribe. So let's start by talking about the thieving experience nerf to the Crux Econ Knights in the Garden of Karid. Jagex has, I quote, reduced the amount of thieving experience you get from pickpocketing Crux Econ Knights, bringing them in line with other thieving trading methods. The experience per action has been reduced from 397 down to 278, or in other words, about a 30% experience nerf. So if you were gaining 1.2 million thieving experience per hour with max boost, you'll now be getting around 840,000. If you're getting 900,000 thieving experience per hour, you'll now be getting around 630,000. Now, I personally don't see why nerfing a method that requires so many high-level things to do without it being complete ass was necessary, but at least it didn't take them a year to nerf it this time, so there's that. The method is still better than camping wildy safes in terms of AFK thieving, experience, although I'm not sure I'd enjoy it very much once my aura runs out. If you're wondering why you can't buy any bonds right now, it's because bonds just went up like 10 million GP, they're selling for 80 million GP each, and perhaps even more once you're watching this video, because Jagex released a bunch of bond bundles. For the low price of 560 mil, you can get yourself 250 more bank spaces at the cost of 7 bonds. Which, you know, at least it is obtainable using in-game GP, but damn... That is expensive. Woo! The second bundle is actually quite good value, being the Premium Aura bundle, giving you the Majorat, Desert Pantheon, and Warven Instinct Auras for a two bond discount compared to buying them individually. Now, if the Majorat Aura is the only aura you want, you can still get that thing using 1,000 Reaper Points instead, which at the current prices of Hydrixes and Bonds is slightly cheaper as well. There are two Legendary Pet Bundles costing you six Bonds, which I suggest not buying at all, and instead getting a Legendary Pet using your Oddments. Finally, there's a Keepsake Keys and Dice Package for one Bond, which is actually okay value if you happen to need keepsake keys, prismatic dies, and chameleon dies. If you just want keepsake keys though, just go ahead and buy them separately in the Solomon's General Store as those are also discounted. In terms of notable patches, the protein essence can now properly be converted into other proteins, which wasn't possible before. Master Max Cape players should now be able to place that cape in the player owned house cape rack. Some Elite Dungeon 3 enemies were shooting spells from their feet? What? Huh? Okay. Greater bar sees some quality of life improvements, including that the buff is no longer lost if a player clicks on a target without actually attacking it. There's also a decent amount of Garden of Karid fixes, but the most important ones are that you can now set a default seed amount for your herb patches, and you can smack enormous amounts of items into your compost bin at once. Quality of life stuff, always nice. Now you might have noticed a large amount of the old Jack Track cosmetics being completely removed from the Oddman store. Currently, thanks to a player named Rubik, we have an idea what's going to happen. Now this may not be definitive, but in the game cache, he found something about a Yak Coins currency, which will be a new currency used in the upcoming Yak Track to obtain old Yak Track rewards. My guess is these cosmetics are never coming back to the Oddman store, so Oddmans will become even less valuable and you'll be getting coins, those Yak Coins, every five Yak Track levels or so to use instead. If it's a good or bad change really depends on how common and easy to obtain those Yak Coins are. If you want to get a cool cosmetic, there's this secret cryptic clue thing that allows you to get an item called the Chaos Witch's Wand by doing the following steps. Start by telegrabbing the sunken box at the Garden of Karid, which to find you need to place your camera in a sort of weird angle. Place the note on the nearby washing line to dry it and then read it. Go to the VTAM sign, which is south of the magic shop in Varok and then dig in front of it using a spade. Use a single dust rune on the lockbox you've just found. Finally, dig in front of the Dragonkin statue, which is on the first floor of the Amemheim, while wearing a Tox Zil shield. I initially wanted to mention this in last week's news video, but I forgot to add it. Anyways, here you go. You're welcome. One other thing I think you'd like to know is that both the Adrenaline Urn and Persistent Rage Relic Power will be seeing some changes that will complement the Infernal Puzzle Box's effect with the upcoming Legacy of Zamrat Quest Finale. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.